Bear markets are strange beasts. While they do present unique opportunities for the astute amongst us, they're also fraught with risks that otherwise wouldn't exist. Risks that could get you even more wrecked when placing the wrong bets. So in my video today, I'm going to take you through 10 of the biggest mistakes that you can make in these treacherous market conditions. Your portfolio will be begging you not to miss this one. There be bears in them there woods, so going further without a disclaimer wouldn't be good. If financial advice is what you're looking to find, then put that thought right out of your mind. Allow me to make it crystal clear you won't find that sort of stuff around here. Entertainment and education are what's on display, so if that ain't up your street, then be on your way. Now here at the Coin Bureau, crypto content is our speciality. We give you all you need to know with a dose of reality. If hype and shilling is your idea of fun, then there are plenty of other channels to check out, just not this one. Now, my name is Guy and I'll be your guide. If you like what you see, then why not subscribe? Ringing the bell is also advised. It'll mean you're alerted when my next video arrives. That's quite enough rhyming, so it's about time I parked it and told you what mistakes to avoid making in this big bad bear market. The first and biggest mistake you can make in a bear market is to try and time the market or buy the dip. Now, this is not something that's specific to crypto, and it can be applied to nearly any market out there. When you're in a peak bull market, prices tend to follow the trend. Indeed, you might have heard the expression, the trend is your friend. Well, that usually applies to the downside as well. Momentum is a powerful force in the markets, and investor sentiment is hard to turn around when markets are trending lower. This has also been likened to catching falling knives. Although you think an asset may be undervalued, the markets can keep dumping said asset for much longer than you can stomach. Something else that you have to be careful of is the dead cat bounce. As the name suggests, these are temporary market reversals that you think might indicate a turning of the tide, but are really nothing more than a temporary upswing that can leave you wrecked when it runs out of steam. All these factors, combined with all the hopium and FOMO that tends to get flung around, means that buying the bottom is incredibly hard to do. Therefore, if you really think that an asset is attractively priced and you would like to start accumulating it, then you may want to consider a DCA or dollar cost average approach. For those unfamiliar, this is a tried and tested method of slowly accumulating an asset over time in small, regular buys that average out the buy or sell price and smooth out the volatility. I've talked about this in much greater detail in a video that I made for my Clips channel a few months ago. That's linked to in the description for you folks. But even if you think that you want to slowly buy into a cryptocurrency because it's cheap, you have to be careful of making the next mistake. And that is basing your valuation metrics on cryptocurrency prices that you experienced in the bull market. At the end of last year, I pushed a poll on Twitter where I asked all my followers when they bought their first cryptocurrency. Over 50% of you said it was in 2021. What this means is that you bought your first cryptocurrency while it was going through one of the strongest bull runs to date. Hence, your perception of a cryptocurrency's value is determined by your experience in that bull market. Just because a cryptocurrency is off its all-time highs by over 90% does not automatically mean that it is attractively priced. In fact, there could be a strong chance that it's still overpriced. That's because in bear markets, people's expectation of returns on all asset classes are adjusted down considerably. Unlike stocks, which have cash flows that apply to them, crypto is more speculative and hence the price itself is based on near binary outcomes, i.e. either it has great long-term success or it fails. This is something that has also played out in past bear markets. I recall back in the 2018 bear market, there were some cryptocurrencies that were well off their peak and may have appeared cheap, but never recovered. For example, we had the likes of IOTA, Dash, and Bitcoin Cash. All reached their all-time highs around the end of 2017, 
but fell around 95% to their bear market lows. Though this may have looked like a bargain at the time, the sad reality is that they have never recovered. If you had bought these coins based on historical assumptions of their value, you would have missed out on some of the largest gains in other altcoins in 2020 and 2021. Thus, it's fair to say that some of those hot altcoins that reached dizzying highs during this most recent bull run have seen their best days. Even if they do manage to recover those gains, it may not be any time soon. Now, this actually ties into the broader question of expectations for this market and the next bear market mistake you can make. You have to adjust your expectations for this market. Returns of 100 or even 10x in these conditions are going to be hard to come by. The sooner that you realize that, the less likely you are to FOMO into the next hot altcoin that's pushed onto the market. It's suboptimal from an investing perspective because if your expectations are that a particular altcoin will rally by many multiples, you could overextend yourself. It could lead to you making some well known trading mistakes. Mistakes that I've covered in another video, which is, of course, in the description. Now, unrealistic expectations also lead to bad budgeting during times like these. Having all your funds in an alternative asset class like crypto in the hope of hypnotic gains is not a safe way to play it. It's essential to have an adequate buffer to hold you over for the rest of the bear market. I'll also add that the bear market we're entering, more on that in a bit, is likely different from those of the past. It's a bear market that's going to coincide with the most chaotic geopolitical and economic climate that we've seen in many, many years. All the more reason to make sure that you have enough funds to support yourself outside of the crypto space. Moreover, apart from the perspective of investing decisions, unrealistic expectations about potential returns are not happy from a mental perspective either. Placing your faith in the potential of a coin to pull bull market moves in a bear market is going to leave you frustrated and dejected. For my own peace of mind, I generally prefer to have low expectations about returns in a bear market. When I invest in a particular coin or token, I do so assuming that prices are likely to remain depressed for at least a year or more. I also try to focus less on the price once I've made my decision. It makes no difference to the performance of the coin when you refresh prices on CMC every hour. It only adds to your anxiety. I prefer to just focus on the fundamentals. Invest and forget. Try it yourself. It could help to ease a lot of your crypto-related anxiety. Speaking of which, if crypto stresses you out, I prescribe 20 minutes to watch my video on crypto stress. On to the next mistake, though, and this is likely to ruffle a few feathers. When it comes to asset allocation in a bear market, you need to completely rethink the weightings of your portfolio. That's because in bear markets, participants tend to gravitate away from alts. If you've been following my personal portfolio recently, you'll know that when we entered this bear market, it was quite top heavy in BTC and ETH. And over the past three weeks, I've been allocating yet more towards these assets. This is mainly because in times of market stress, investors tend to gravitate away from the high risk, high return investments into more established blue chip assets. And this is not something exclusive to crypto either. It plays out in the TradFi markets as well. Sometimes investors will move into blue chip stocks and sometimes they move away from stocks entirely and into bonds, etc. If you are going to be investing in crypto, you need to seriously consider being top heavy in these blue chips. We are quite far from any alt season and holding out hope for one in a bear market is ambitious to say the least. There's historical precedent for this if you take a look at previous bear markets. During these periods, Bitcoin dominance shot up. That's basically because it performed better than alts across the board. You can also take a look at the Bitcoin price of some of your favorite alts during these periods. Relative to BTC, they have been on the decline. And this includes ETH, of course. And I bet that has many of you wondering why I still have so much ETH in my portfolio. Well, that's mainly because I think that ETH has moved past the simple altcoin moniker and is now a so-called blue chip crypto. In the last three months, its dominance has held relatively steady. 
On top of that, I'm long on ETH because of the upcoming merge. More about that in the description. Now, of course, this is just a personal view. I still hold a lot of other altcoins, but sometimes even those coins with the most potential can't resist bear market forces. Moreover, you may have your own views about which altcoins are blue chip, and perhaps you view my allocation to ETH as being too top heavy. That's perfectly fine. All I'm trying to get at is that in a bear market, altcoins tend to underperform the Bitcoin benchmark. We also cannot ignore historical data, as we've endured past crypto bear markets, and those periods can be instructive. Now, having said that, you also can't view past bear markets as scripture when it comes to how this one is likely to play out, which is, funnily enough, the next mistake on my list. While this bear market is likely to share a lot of the characteristics that we've seen in previous ones, it's also happening against a completely different global macro backdrop. The two most recent crypto bear markets were from November 2013 to January 2015, and from December 2017 to January 2020. They were mostly caused by factors specific to the crypto market. Hype that reached fever pitch, followed by painful periods of consolidation. However, during those times, the macro environment was relatively stable. In the 2013 bear market, the Fed's fund rate was near zero. And in the 2018 bear market, the rate reached a max of 2.4% before the Fed started bringing it down towards the tail end of 2019. On top of this, inflation was low and stable. There wasn't a war in Europe and Corona was a beer. Things are a lot different today. The Fed is heading into a hard rate hiking cycle that has already started driving capital away from risk on assets and into treasuries and the like. The consensus estimate for the Fed's fund rate at the end of the year is 2.5%. However, there are many who think that even this will be too low to curb inflation. I happen to fall into that bucket and think that we're likely to see a Fed's fund rate of at least 3.5% by the end of the year. The point is that we are rushing into a rate tightening environment, the likes of which we haven't seen for decades. Moreover, if you've seen my video on the upcoming recession, you'll know that we could be heading for a nasty dip in global growth in the next few months. This is at a time of high inflation, meaning we're likely due a period of the dreaded stagflation. These are market conditions which crypto has never experienced. The most recent global recession was back in 2008, and that was before Bitcoin was even launched. So, all I'm trying to say here is that you shouldn't view the past as fully indicative of future returns. Now, this comes not only from the potential performance of cryptocurrencies, but also the length of this bear market. Some think that it could last as little as a year. Others think that it could extend all the way out until the next Bitcoin halving. Now, I'm sure that there are videos out there that explain this in more detail. Moving on to the next mistake, though, and this has to do with NFTs. What I find quite interesting is that despite the massive drop in the crypto market, it appears as if NFT activity is still holding up. There are still projects doing drops, and some DGENs are still aping in at any cost. I would caution against this, and that's for a few reasons. Firstly, while we have had bear markets in the fungible crypto space before, we haven't seen one in the NFT space. During the last bear market, NFTs were relatively unknown. Heck, OpenSea only really launched in early 2018 as we were entering the last bear market. So, what that means is that NFT bear markets are uncharted territory. Just because trading volumes in the NFT market have not fallen as much as those in the fungible space it doesn't mean that they won't. And if they do, it could be hard to try and draw parallels between the length and depth of any NFT bear market compared with a bear market for crypto in general. Moreover, bear markets tend to have a way of draining liquidity, and the impact of less liquidity is likely to be greater for NFTs. That's because they are, by their very nature, bespoke, unique assets. To borrow a TradFi analogy, it's a lot easier to find someone to buy your shares at the market price than it is to sell rare and exotic art. Now, I must stress that I happen to think NFTs have amazing potential in the long run, and that their use cases are far broader than the market gives them credit for. 
But I've also seen all the froth in the PFP NFT space, and quite frankly, a shakeout is due. Blue chips will survive, but 95% of the rest will go to zero. And looking at some of the crimes against crypto committed by some of these drops, they deserve to. Anywho, while you don't want to be left holding an NFT with no liquidity, you also don't want to be someone else's exit liquidity. And that ties into the next mistake that you can make. The term exit liquidity is used to define those situations where insiders and institutions will use retail investors as a means to exit their positions. Quite simply, to dump their bags into our unsuspecting hands. Now, sometimes this is a result of coordinated actions by those insiders, but often it's just a matter of some of these early investors having their tokens vested or released to them. Given that we could be entering a bear market of at least a year, there are many projects out there that will have token unlocks. In some instances, these early investors will be sitting on some healthy unrealized gains, which will only be effectively realized on those unlocks. What that means is that they are more likely to want to sell these unlocked tokens in this bear market than hodl them. What that means is that you have to pay extra special attention to those projects that have a large unlocked supply. And you can get a sense of that by comparing the fully diluted value or fully diluted market cap on CMC to the actual market cap. It gives you an indication of how much the market cap would be were all the supply to be released. I talked about this in much greater detail in a post on Telegram, which I'll leave linked to below. And this actually further ties into the mistake I talked about earlier when it comes to coins that are way below their previous highs. Those all-time highs were at a time when the circulating supply was much lower. Hence, it's not only that the markets have completely changed, but if these coins go through large token unlocks, the tokenomics will have changed as well. Now, of course, I must stress that this does not apply to all projects. There may be some project teams out there that have really long and strong vesting schedules. Or there might be a situation in which these early investors are looking to hodl and not liquidate. All I'm saying is that you will want to pay extra attention to a project's FDV and its vesting schedule. OK, next mistake. Yes, it may be a bear market, but that does not automatically mean that all prices are going lower from here and all at the same time. Yes, there are many who think that we have further downside on Bitcoin and especially alts, but these are all best guesses. The only thing that you can do that's worse than trying to time your buys is to short any crypto. That's because it usually means trading crypto with derivatives or leveraged instruments. If you've been following this channel for some time, you will know that I actively discourage leveraged trading of any sort. Even if you think that a particular shitcoin is destined for the dustbin, don't discount the power of a militant community intent on keeping its price above water. They can keep that price up longer than you can remain solvent. Sometimes the nature of leverage insurance means that those in the short positions can get wrecked and liquidated just as badly as the longs were over the past few months. That's due to short squeezes that can be so powerful they've left multi-billion dollar hedge funds insolvent. Now, I've covered the risks of leverage trading in much greater detail in a video that I did last year, and you know where to go to get it. So, while we're going through this bear market, please purge the urge to burn your funds by shorting. Anywho, on to the next mistake. If there's something that we've learned from the most recent bull market, it's that price predictions in crypto should be taken with a truckload of salt. That's because it can be incredibly hard to predict where an asset as new as cryptocurrency is likely to go in the medium to long term. Even those models and analysts who've previously been incredibly accurate have been invalidated by this bear market. Now, I'm not trying to throw shade at anyone, of course. All of us have made predictions in the past that have proven to be less than accurate, and that's okay. Predictions based on key technical indicators and other analysis are best guesses as to the potential price of a cryptocurrency. But that's all they are, guesses. And knowing that, you shouldn't follow anyone's predictions religiously. That goes for prices, 
as well as the length of this bear market. Rather, you should follow a range of different analysts and gain information from a broad set of resources. The wider their opinions on the bear market, the better. That way, you're able to have a wider perspective on how the markets are likely to play out. And this can all be easily summarized by the following. D-Y-O-R. Do your own research. And speaking of research, this ties into the final mistake that you can make in a bear market, and that is giving up. It's one of the most common traps that I've seen in previous bear markets. People who are lured into the crypto space by promises of large gains and nothing more. They are called crypto tourists and they're like fair weather friends. They're in the good times and not the bad. You don't want to be a crypto tourist. That's because bear markets are where the best long-term gains are generated. So what could I possibly mean by that, you ask? Well, it's during bear markets where people and projects spend the most time learning and building. Free from the hype and FOMO that permeates a bull market, it allows us to really focus on the tech. I remember many of my friends who threw in the towel back in 2018 and said that they would never invest in crypto again. They sold their coins, abandoned their accounts, and stopped watching my videos. However, in so doing, they gave up the most amazing opportunity to learn about some of the most promising crypto projects being built. In 2019, the concept of DeFi was a novelty, and whenever I discussed it with those aforementioned friends, they would roll their eyes. However, as we've seen over the past two years, DeFi has radically transformed crypto. The same can be said for all of the other highly innovative layer ones that emerged from the previous bear market. The point is that these are the times that allow you to focus on the fundamentals and refine your own personal investment thesis. I'm not saying it's easy, of course. It's during bear markets that we get maximum FUD. The mainstream news is going to be throwing headlines like this at you constantly. It's a trial by fire that tests your resolve on a near daily basis. But if you can tune out the noise and focus on the fundamentals, then you are well on your way to long-term gains. And that's it for my list of the top 10 mistakes to make in this bear market. Now, of course, it's not an exhaustive list and you also shouldn't view it as gospel. Although I may have lived through two previous bear markets, we're all still learning. Like I've said, this bear market could be completely different from previous ones. It could throw some crazy curveballs at us that we've not witnessed before. It may require a completely new list of bear market mistakes that need to be added to those I've covered today. But whatever this bear market does throw at us, there are two things I know with absolute certainty. One, crypto is here to stay. And two, I will be here every day and with you every step of the way. Now I'm keen to get your thoughts on my list. Is there anything that you would add? Or is there something that you don't agree with? I'd love to know in the comments below. Also, while you're down there, I have something extra special for you. It is my dedicated socials page, which has all the official links to my verified social media channels. These include my Telegram Insider channel with daily market analysis, Twitter for the latest from the Bureau, Instagram and TikTok for behind the scenes, and finally, my weekly newsletter. It's here that I share my crypto tips as well as a breakdown of my personal portfolio. So be sure to find that page if you want all that good stuff. Now, fancy some sick merch? Want to support the channel? Well, you can do both by buying some of the items in my merch store. Hoodies, tees, beanies, it's the bee's knees. That's also down below. And finally, if you guys liked this guy's video, share the love. Hit that like and tap that subscribe. Ping the bell as well for good measure. You don't want to miss what else I have coming. Hope to see you guys real soon.